Hey, yo, man, what up, man? It's Black and Brown Boxing. What's going on, boys? It's, um, I think it's Thursday, Thursday morning. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better, man. I've been under the weather all week. Uh, too, too congested and all fucked up to go live. So I've been having to uh, just kick back on the live streams. But I'm starting to feel better, and I want to make this video tonight, and hopefully I'll be live tonight, man. And today's video... It's going to be called um, Cap and Boxing, something like that. And what I'm going to address in this video today is all the fairy tales that boxers, promoters, managers, all the fairy tales that they tell people and that fans believe and run with, you know? And the reason I'm making the video, the reason I'm even on this hype is because of the Devin Haney Shakur Stevenson situation. Devin Haney Shakur Stevenson situation, um, has heated up. Salute to H Money. He had Bill Haney, Devin Haney, and Shakur all on the same panel. And that interview slash confrontation on H Money channel has basically gone viral. It's basically gone viral and boxing fans are going crazy. And I'm hearing to the arguments, I'm I'm hearing the debates and the arguments going back and forth and and in, in that certain situation I didn't like Bill Haney's stance. I didn't like some of the things Bill Haney had said. I didn't like the way Bill Haney uh, stayed in the middle of Devin and Shakur. And I didn't like what Bill added to the conversation. And I especially didn't agree with the part or like the part when Bill told Shakur that they can move Loma out the way. Now, when that was said, I disagreed 1000% because I think we all know as boxing fans that for one, Bill don't make the rules and for two, Loma ain't moving out of nobody's way. For three, Bob Aaron makes the rules. So us boxing fans, we knew that wasn't true. We knew it was cap. And um, a lot of a lot of people now are getting on, on Bill Haney for that shit. Well, that's what got me thinking. Everybody's jumping on Bill Haney, including myself. I didn't think it was smart of him to say that. But in the same breath, Shakur Stevenson is out here calling out people and, and, and saying that he's sending contracts when he's really not. So, yeah, Bill's capping, Shakur's capping, Ryan Garcia been capping, Tank been capping, Tiafimo, like a lot of these dudes get in front of cameras and they say things that are not true. And in my opinion, they're trying to play the public. They're trying to play us as boxing fans. And a lot of us boxing fans, we get played. We get played. Why? Because we believe it. I'm guilty of that shit. I believe a lot of the cap, a lot of the shit that I hear on YouTube, a lot of the, uh, the the shit that comes out of these boxers' mouth, I tend to fall for that shit. I believe it. But what happens is over time is you fool me and you fool me and you fool me and you get me believing, you get me believing something that comes to be, that come, come to find out that shit ain't true. You continue, you continuously do that shit to me, I'm going to make videos like this calling everybody out. And... Shakur said he sent Williams to pay that contract. Williams to pay that said he ain't never sent no fucking contract. That was all fucking lies. Now it's up to you as a boxing fan who you want to believe. If you got one fighter saying he did, you got one fighter saying he didn't. If there ain't no proof, how do us as boxing fans we know the truth? The only proof that would be that would be um, that would be able to be brought to the light would be the actual contract and proof of a fax or an email being sent. A contract being sent to William Zapata. Now, I don't think we're ever going to see that. I don't think we'll ever see that. So it's hard for me just to believe Shakur and say, yeah, Shakur really sent William a contract. Nah, on the other hand, bro, I think I'm going to believe the, the side that says there was never a contract sent. That was all bullshit. And why do I say that? Because Shakur is the one in the public. Shakur is the one on Twitter. Shakur is also playing the media game. Just the same way Bill Haney is, the same way Ryan Garcia is, the same way Tiafimo Lopez is, the same way they all are. The same way all the kids I just named, except Tank. Tank is also, Tank also does this a lot. But Tank is not a kid. Tank is 28. Going back to Ryan, Ryan has been saying that he's trying to fight Tank Davis and Manny Pacquiao ever since 2020. After he beat Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia has been doing a lot of capping out here. And a lot of us boxing fans, we fall for it. So we've already established Ryan been out here capping. We've established Shakur's out here capping. We've established De Bill Haney and Devin are out here capping. 
Let's move on to Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo Lopez recently been doing a lot of interviews. He got he got a fight with Ryan with a uh, uh, Sandor Martin coming up, and Tiafimo Lopez is also guilty of of telling things, telling fairy tales, telling saying things in interviews that are just not true. Um, refusing to acknowledge the Cambosos fight, refusing to acknowledge about that Barbosa is a quality opponent. Having this fairy tale that he's just going to jump the line and go straight to Josh Taylor, um, it, it's just not true. It's all cap and it's all fairy tale bullshit again. And that's why I got to call these young men out. Same thing with Tang Davis. Over the last few years, you'll hear one thing in the media, but then you'll hear him do an interview and say, I've never asked for big fights. So you get a lot of capping out of that, that camp as well. And... The reason for the video today is is to say, hey, look, we're on to this shit. We're not going to continue falling for this shit. Bill Haney isn't the only one out here capping. Shakur ain't the only one out here capping. Ryan Garcia is also telling fairy tales. Tia Fimo's telling fairy tales. Tank is telling fairy tales. I think this is what this new generation, I think this is what they're going to do. This is what they're going to do. They're going to try to manip manipulate and control the narratives control the media and they're going to try to win over boxing fans through lies through media and through through whatever else social media and whatever in any other way they can so the lies and the capping is just starting to pile up on all these young men um i'm not gonna just blame one of them i think they're all doing it i think they all clout chase each other now, as far as something Shakur did say that I do agree with is that um, Shakur does not clout chase these dudes the way they clout chase each other. And they all do it to each other. Tiafimo does it. Ryan does it. Tank does it. Devin does it. They all start clout chasing each other when they got a fight lined up. When they got a fight lined up, they all start clout chasing each other. And it's like with this whole Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis thing right now. They're telling us they're going to fight each other, right? But... They're fighting other other guys before they're gonna fight each other. So, for me as a boxing fan, and and hearing all the fairy tales over the last few years, it's hard for me just to believe that this Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia fight. It's hard for me to believe that it's real and gonna happen. On the other hand, I I think it's easier to believe that they're just trying to promote their upcoming fights because that's what they've been doing. They've been using each other's names to promote upcoming fights what's different this time is that does i've seen the zone announce that ryan garcia is going to fight tank davis on the zone that's what's different this time but we'll see if that even plays out we'll see if that comes to fruition but the norm in boxing is to fight a low level opponent but then call out a higher level opponent during your fight week and what it seems like to me, what a lot of these guys are doing, Bill Haney, Shakur, Tank, Ryan, um, Tio, what it seems like to me what they're doing is they're tying their names to each other and to other boxers. And like I said a second ago, they're controlling the narrative and they're controlling the media. Just like Earl Spence and Bud Crawford, they talked about fighting. That's all anybody talked about. They were, they were in control of the media and the control of the headlines. And I think that's what's going on here. I think boxers, they want to control the headlines, even if they're not fighting or they are fighting. And if they are fighting, they want more headlines. They want more attention onto their fight. So they will start tying their names to other fighters. Tank Davis, Ryan, Shakur, Devin, you know, T.O., Josh Taylor. It, it goes on and on. These kids do it over and over and over again. And... I'm not going to sit here and pick and choose a side and say, this guy's lying. This guy's fucking clout chasing. Um, I'm not going to do all that. What I will say is this. I think Bill Haney accused Shakur of, um, what did he call it? I, for, a pro, um, I forgot what they called it. Some fake shit, right? But what I said to that is boxers do that shit every day. Boxers do that shit every day. That's what they're out here doing every single day. Devin Haney and Bill Haney in the past have been accused of calling out fighters when when they know that they have a fight scheduled and the fighter that they're calling out has a fight scheduled. 
and it seems like that situation has happened again. Um, you got Bill Haney telling Shakur Stevenson that their fight could be made when everybody, including Bill Haney and Devin Haney, knows damn well that Lomachenko is next and the, the, the contract and the fight is damn near done. So Bill Haney basically did what he's been called out for over the last few years. And that can't be defended. Like, no one can defend that. That's up to Bill Haney to come out here and, and, and argue and defend that because I seen it with my own two eyes. Bill, before in the past, you know, you did it. I think when you had the Linares fight or, or Loma had a fight scheduled and there, there was bickering back and forth when both sides already had a fight scheduled. I seen it. I stay out of it. But this time it was too obvious you got Bill Haney talking to Shakur Stevenson about scheduling a fight when they know damn well Lomachenko is next and that fight is damn near done. That fight is damn near done. So it's hard for me to, to sit here and agree with Bill Haney when he's calling Shakur. I, I can't remember the word. Uh, um, I can't remember the word they were using, man. Basically clout chasing. Basically clout chasing. It's hard for me to agree with Bill Haney when he's accusing Shakur of clout chasing when Shakur was asked a question after he fought Conceição. Shakur was asked a question and all he did was answer the question in the best way possible. Hey, I want to fight the champion. So whoever got the belts, that's who I want to fight. He didn't ask himself that question. That was ESPN asking that question. And he answered the question in, in, in a way that every young boxer should answer. I want to fight the champion. So since you're asking me, if you're going to ask me who I want to fight, I want to fight whoever got the belts. And because there was a phone call made in the background that say, hey, you know, I was asked a question that was just for the TV. They asked me, I know you guys are fighting Loma. So, you know what I mean? Don't worry. Handle your shit with Loma. I got next. Because that phone call took place in the background, now it's, Oh, Shakur was capping. Shakur was lying because of the phone call in the background. Well, I feel like boxing fans are not including all the context. A major part of the context is, number one, is Shakur was asked a question. Shakur was asked a question. that He didn't just come out and call Devin Haney out after he beat Conceição. We all know that. We all seen that. He was asked a question. He was baited in to that question. He was baited into giving that answer. And he gave it. Now... Because Shakur and Devin are cool, there was a phone call made afterwards to say, hey, look, bro, that was them asking the question. It's all for promotional. You know what I mean? I know you guys are fighting Shakur next. I got next. There's nothing wrong with that phone call. Where it gets all fucked up is when now the boxing fans get a hold of all this shit and, 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 and force Bill Haney to come on and give an answer and start answering to this shit. And then Bill Haney lets everybody know that they had a private conversation. So now private conversations now are being busted out. And that's where it got all fucked up. I don't think the private conversation had to get busted out. I think it could have been left on like just some clout shit, just some tying our names together shit. Like it always has been in the past. I mean, Devin's been tying his name to Loma and to everybody else, to Ryan. Devin's been doing the same shit. I've defended Devin. I've defended Devin in these same situations. So I know Devin's been doing the same shit. I defended Devin when he was at Ryan Garcia's fight sitting in front row. When people were saying, hey, damn, this dude's Ryan Garcia's biggest fan. And I was like, bro, I don't know, bro. It seems like to me like he just wants to fight. So I cannot defend Devin in certain situations and then accuse Shakur of what I just defended Devin from doing. See, I don't think Shakur did nothing wrong. I don't think Shakur did nothing wrong in the Devin Haney, uh, uh, Devin Haney situation. For me, who's wrong is Bill Haney for being a 45, maybe 40 plus year old man getting involved and, and staying involved. Like if you want to get involved and you want to set up a live stream between your son and Shakur Stevenson, that's fine, bro. Do that. But it was almost like it was Shakur versus Bill, you know, and that's not what it is. It's Shakur versus Devin. So I think Bill Haney was a little bit out of pocket in that interview. But at the same time, Shakur been doing the same shit. Shakur been doing the same shit to William Zapata. So I'm not going to sit here and just like act like, oh, Bill Haney's the biggest capper in boxing. Nah, bro. All these dudes are. All of them are. And they've all been capping for the last two years. And we've been, we as boxing fans, we've all been falling for this shit. 
whether you fall for Tang Davis's bullshit, whether you fall for uh, uh, Ryan's bullshit, you fall for Tiafimo Lopez's bullshit, you could even fall for Canelo's bullshit, Jerome Boots' and his bullshit, no matter whose bullshit you're falling for, you're falling for somebody's bullshit. So my message to you, boxing fans, stop picking and choosing side, bro. Your favorite fighter is also a clout chaser. Your favorite fighter also be capping. So um, stop with the bullshit, uh, boxing fans. Stop picking and choosing sides. If you're going to call one dude out for capping, call them all out for capping. Because let me tell you something. This capping bullshit, this clout chasing bullshit, as good and as promising as this new generation is, Clout chasing and capping is part of it. It's part of the fucking soap opera. And a lot of us boxing fans have a lot of faith in this new generation. Me, myself, personally, I put all my faith in this new generation. I think they're going to save the sport. They're going to bring the sport back. But let me tell you something. Clout chasing is part of the soap opera. These kids have joined the soap opera. They're in it. They're in it. And a lot of people say, oh, these kids are going to fight. These kids are going to fight. We'll see. Hopefully they do fight. I think they'll fight me, myself, personally. I think down the, down the line, down the road, these kids will end up fighting each other. But in the meantime, in between time, these kids have joined in on the soap opera that revolves around the sport of boxing. And that includes all of them. From Tiafimo to Devin to Shakur to Ryan to Tank to Boots. You name it, these kids are playing the fucking game. They're playing the boxing game. And boxing fans, do not play yourself and fall for the bullshit. Just keep supporting the sport. Keep supporting what you see inside the ring. And um, just look out for whoever's chasing greatness, man, whoever's chasing legacy. And, and, and look out for who just continuously caps, continuously, continuously does not follow through and does not chase legacy in the sport of boxing, man. That's all I got for this one. It's Black and Brown Boxing. I'm out.